On my last video about the coronavirus and climate change, I got a couple of comments that I wasn't sure how to respond to. These were suggesting that the response to the pandemic could actually accelerate global warming. This would, of course, be a huge deal, a disaster on top of a disaster. And so I've spent the last couple of weeks digging and I wanted to share with you what I've unearthed. Now, before I dive in, I just wanted to say that, of course, I think the coronavirus is terrible and I think all the suffering it's causing is terrible. And I wish so deeply that it wasn't happening. It, it feels strange to have to say this, but somehow some people watch my video about why I thought the coronavirus was a bad thing and took the message from that that I thought the coronavirus was a good thing? But okay, why would warming accelerate? After all, carbon dioxide emissions are dropping substantially. In fact, Carbon Brief estimate that they'll drop by about 1.6 billion tons this year. This record drop would represent a 4% decrease relative to 2019. And isn't that a huge deal for climate change? I hear you cry. And to that, I say firstly, thanks for the great question. And secondly, N no, no it isn't. The thing is, carbon dioxide gradually builds up over years, decades and centuries. That means if we reduce or even stop emissions for a single year, that doesn't necessarily change the overall direction we're headed in. And yes, a 4% decrease is huge compared to the actual increases in emissions we've been seeing year on year, but it's actually half the reductions we should be seeing each year if we're going to be hitting our most ambitious climate targets. And hopefully it goes without saying that this way of cutting emissions, which is disrupting countless lives and livelihoods, is not how we want to be halting climate change. Okay, but CO2 isn't the only kind of emissions that we're reducing this year. In many regions around the world, air pollution is also dropping with profound health benefits. A part of this is aerosols. These, unlike CO2, disappear from the atmosphere pretty quickly when we stop emitting them. Oh, and I know that when we talk about aerosols, we often think about deodorant sprays and CFCs, but aerosols actually means any small droplets or particles that float in the air, and they come from all sorts of human and natural sources. Aerosols tend to have a cooling effect on the planet, and this is what the comments I got were getting at. The idea that reducing these aerosols would reduce their cooling effect and cause a warming spike in 2020. I mean, this sounds pretty sensible, but while I am an atmospheric physicist, I am not an aerosol person. So I asked a bunch of aerosol people and all of them said the same thing. No, it's very unlikely that aerosol reductions in 2020 would be nearly enough to cause a noticeable temperature spike, which frankly is a huge relief. So, so far this video has just been a very long-winded way of saying that the emissions reductions we're seeing in 2020 won't have much direct impact on global warming. But that's not all the aerosol people told me. Aerosol people sounds a bit like people made of aerosols, doesn't it? <laughs> Understanding aerosols is one of the big challenges of climate science. While we know they cool the planet overall, we don't know by how much. That's because not only do they intercept sunlight, but they also mess around with clouds. Understanding these tricky cloud processes is, and I'm going to use the technical term here, really bloody hard. Because we don't know how much warming aerosols have undone, we don't know how hot the planet would be without them. That means it's very hard to know exactly how sensitive the world is to carbon dioxide. Ultimately, that means we can't exactly pin down how hot the planet will get in the future. But now that aerosol people are hoping to spot the difference before and after aerosol reductions in many parts of the world, they're looking for any impacts on clouds or other weather properties. This could ultimately help us better predict the planet's temperature in the future. So. Yeah, that's kind of a huge deal. That's like one of the biggest questions of climate science. So no, this year's emissions reductions won't have a big impact on climate change, but they might just have a big impact on understanding climate change. If you want to know more about this, check out the link in the description and also the pinned comment. I've linked to an article that I wrote for Scientific American all about uh, what the aerosol people are hoping to learn. And while you're going around clicking on things, please do go ahead and give this video a like and a share to help support the channel. 
And if you're desperate to support me even more, then you can help me make future videos by heading over to my Patreon. But what about what happens next? What are the lessons we can learn from 2020 to teach us about climate change? Well, I've put a playlist together all about the topic with videos from me, Simon Clark, and Our Changing Climate. And if you haven't checked those two out already, you definitely, definitely should. Until next time, bye.